goes, oh, please have a seat. I'll, I'll join you. And he just kind of like plops down. He crosses his legs. He doesn't like n- like kneel fancily at the table. He sits down. He like crisscrosses applesauce. Like <laughs> sits down. He goes, I've heard so much about uh, what is going on with you from my apprentice Tamond. Do oh, please. Uh, he says, oh, and he like just like it's, he was hyper focused. And he goes, my apologies. Um, I'm Menelin. It's nice to meet you. And he reaches out to Illicol, like on on the right, and like tries to shake your hand. And like Zixol, and says like, I'm Menelin. And then uh, to Pilot, natural twenty. Oh. Oh. Hey, this might be helpful. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna show off anyway. And he he reaches out out to shake your hand, Pilot. And he shakes your, and he goes. I'm I'm Minolin. And he lingers. Oh. And he just kinda just kinda I see you found our best kept secret. No <laughs> Holy fuck. He's noticed. And we talked about this. We've talked about this. I yep. uh are you, we um perhaps you should sit down, sir. He is sitting down. He is sitting. He's <laughs> already crisscrossed. He's, he it's like crisscross. No, he like reaches across the table. Okay, okay gotcha. Um, it's probably it probably seats like the four of you, and then like or like one across. So it would, he would have like been able to like reach across. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he like lingers. He, I. Hmm. Where to start now? I am quite flustered. I was going to discuss your trouble with the fey queens but now i want to start here but now i want to i want to know about the fey queens but where should we begin Let's wherever say you our, would like. our, our fates are as it stands currently intertwined with the queens so i believe that's a a good place to start yes let us start there then from what my apprentice tells me you've encountered Queen Mab? We have indeed. And I, I, I present him with the pin as I did to everybody else as I kind of begin the, the spiel. Just how we encountered a drow that answered to the queen in the forest uh, who let us know that we needed to go back to the, to the Feywilds. I think you should do this in character. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. Have a conversation. So we were making our way to, to Storm's Fall, and we encountered a, a drow that was being attacked by a pair of dryads. Um, after, after assisting in the, in the confrontation, he let us know that he answered to the Winter Queen herself, and he had business in the Summer Court. And he, he asked us to, to go and speak with Queen Mab, to let, let her know that he was being accosted by what seemed to be members of the Summer Court, interfering with, with what, what they called their official business. We, we proceeded to the, to the Feywilds and met with Queen Mab herself, who led us to believe that there is strife between the two courts when it comes to the exchange of the seasons. One one thing that we did notice prior to this is there were there was bickering and it was minor it it seemed minor at the time but as 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 this is all compounding together it seems like it must all be connected but there was minor fay bickering in the forest north of Melt whether uh, who should be taking taking over ownership of the forest for the seasons we encountered frostbiters where there should be none Harpies in Rory's Crossroads, where they were acting overly territorial in spaces where they did not belong. Drow burning West Fork, which we do not know if it's connected. Um, As far as we're aware, they were not connected to the Queen, but at this point, I think we should should keep it in the equation. Questions? (laughs) You, you, it looks like you have questions. So many questions. 
We oh, it may be prudent <laughs> to add that we have been tasked to to speak with the Winter Queen. Summer Queen. Summer Queen, you're right. We have been tasked to speak with the Summer Queen on her behalf. Okay. I, uh... We've been given the general direction of the Kingswood, where there lies a gate into the Feywilds. And as you know, that is quite the vague direction from the Queen herself. And we find ourselves in a little bit of a predicament where our good friend here and your mutual interest has a gesh with the Queen. And we must arrive and return back to Queen Mab before the summer equinox, was it? Summer yes. solstice. Summer solstice. Summer solstice. Summer solstice. So time is working against us. Now, I know this is a lot of information, but I believe that we're leaving this in very capable hands. Michelle, we'll take the tea upstairs, please. Please, uh, do, do, all of you, please join me upstairs. And he says, come on, come on, come on. And he, like, reaches out to, like, like, he, like, takes, like, Illicol's hand and tries to help him up. <laughs> like, come, come, come on. We, we must. This explains so much, honestly, is we've, uh, he's, like, walking over towards the, the staircase that, that goes up. He says, we keep, uh, I keep, uh, plenty of measurements, and uh, we take arcane readings, you know, throughout just general, you know, gobbledygook, wibbly wobbly, whatever. Did, uh, just uh, as an aside, did, did we bring this up to the king? Yeah. We did, yeah. right? Did we? Okay. okay. Yeah, we were, I, I was trying I to sway him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get a lot of, lot of things going on in that moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as you can see, and so he reaches the top of the stairs and he's still talking, but he crosses ab above the floor and you lose out on trying to... As you can see, there's this, this, this and this, and, then, and, then, and as the new pass up, he says, so I have these implements to do this and this and this and that, and... But let me just show you. <laughs> and you, you reach the, the sixth floor and it's... <laughs> There are like multiple tables and implements and beakers and like chemistry sets and and brewing stations and all kinds of stuff. And you're again in an entirely encircled glass uh, dome. So like the, the top two floors of the tower, they actually like jut out a little bit. Uh, and it's kind of like the space needles. <laughs> Not exactly, but kind of like it's a tower. And like you, you also notice there's a bed that's like not made at all it's not even like a king or a queen it's like a full size bed it looks like somebody potentially slept in it for like some amount of time recently and there is a spiral staircase in the center that appears to go maybe onto the roof uh, you know you're on the top floor but there is another there's a center staircase and it is completely open and you see at one of the like tables is Tamond who you, you met another another time working on something completely like smudged in soot on one side of his face and uh, Millen walks over to an implement and it appears to be some sort of like it's a pole with something spinning on top and something spinning on the side kind of like it almost looks like a perpetual motion device of like like a like someone would have on their office like desk as like a, a joke or something like the, this thing spins and makes this thing spin and they just keep spinning like it's like a new like a newton's cradle thing or something but he's like he, he points to me he says so some of the stuff i we're capable of doing up here is just your your general thaumaturgical essays but we also do a little bit of the mundane sciences. We, we do a little bit of weathermancy and a little bit of meteorology even, just to make sure the storms coming in aren't going to do any major harm. And uh, we mitigate both the scientific and magical essences that pass through the, through the region. 
he says this device and he like taps it and it's got got like a lot of things motion and it's got a few like gauge outputs he says it it helps determine in what portion of the season of the year we are and it has like four outputs and he says right now it says we're six days off of midsummer that's yesterday it said we were five days past spring which is one two three four five uh he says yesterday it said we were five days past spring but that was three weeks ago every day throughout the hour it it changes like the nor the, the normal progression of the day changes as it should but the next day it seems as if it resets to a completely random day has your device been functioning in the past properly yes and all all essays of the the device itself are all functioning appropriately and an identification spell will show you that in and of itself when so did the, the, the deficiencies thing. begin appearing about 32 days ago on the first day of spring the rollover to the first day of spring didn't happen appropriately it we went from the day before the first day of spring to sometime midwinter it doesn't it doesn't make sense but of course it somehow makes sense in what you've told me if the mantle of power of course speculatively i've never never met the queens um generally the idea thought is that the mantle of power passes from the winter to the summer queen on the first day of spring passes from the summer queen to the winter queen on the first day of fall the equinoxes lore has it that a transfer of the mantle of power is in some essence part of what changes the seasons themselves as the mantle is passed the queen's power grows through it and then begins to wane and the mantle is passed to the to the other queen as it should be of course the solstices being when the queens are at their their most powerful if the mantle isn't passed between the queens, supposing that Mab still has the mantle of power, Titania is getting more powerful up until the solstice, that would mean that the powers themselves would be clashing. And he's like, he, he is incredibly fanatic about it. And so, yep. so what you're saying is theoretically that that the summer should be harsher what i'm saying is this this none of none of the summer makes sense so if the if the if the summer queen is to be gaining power why is ah uh, is it perhaps the nature of winter fighting back is that why the ice giants descend upon us is that why the ice dragon has appeared could that be any relation to nature itself combating? He says, let me explain. No, let, let me try something. And he uh, he pulls out two stones. He pulls out a like a huge like parchment. He rolls it out. he says imagine two queens winter summer their powers wax and wane with the year mab is strongest in the dead of winter during the winter solstice from that point 
She becomes weaker and weaker and weaker until the mantle is passed to the Summer Queen in spring, all through which the power of the Summer Queen has been gaining. The Summer Queen would normally gain the mantle on the spring equinox, on the vernal, or sorry, the first day of spring, through which her power will continue to grow all through summer until midsummer, where it is at its maximum, which is when Mab is at her weakest. She continues to get weaker and weaker and weaker until midsummer, at which point Mab starts to get stronger again. However, if the mantle of power is not passed at the first of spring, if Mab still wears the mantle, while Titania is getting stronger, Titania is stronger, but Mab has the mantle. What happens when Mab is at her weakest and Titania is at her strongest, but Mab wears the mantle? Who knows, right? It doesn't make sense because this should never occur. The balance is completely thrown off. Titania would be at her strongest, but Mab would still have all the power. Perhaps think of the mantle as the way the queen can exert their power into the natural world. Of course, through pure magical strength, this can be done, but the mantle itself allows that energy to be directed into the natural world. If Mab wears the mantle, that means winter's natural energy is being channeled directly into our world as we know it, into our plane through the essence of the Feywild. If at the same time Titania is stronger though, she can channel power the old-fashioned way, I guess one could say, our old-fashioned way through pure arcane existence into the world as well. Uh, so what we can expect is two power bases perfectly offsetting one another. Potentially. I don't know what the man how much power the mantle itself conveys. Well, Mab seemed very, very insistent that we do return with news prior to the to the solstice, and her her understanding was that Titania was going to war. Well, that would but be. She, but what you're implying is that the queen never, never gave up her power. They, what what she told us is, they went, as as they normally do in the years, to exchange the mantle, but Titania did not appear to accept. And of course, that would make sense if the mantle just isn't just to be given; it's to be received. It's it's not. Fey magic is so difficult to it is not just one way it's a deal is never involuntary so for one to give one must accept and to from what I understand to wear the mantle itself is sapping I, I could say so as Mab weakens through to midsummer, continuing to wear the mantle could destroy her. And to lose a queen would mean who who knows? 
drastic news indeed. And at that moment, Michelle comes up with with a, a, a whole serving tray of like a, a pot of tea and and five little like teacups. And she sat down. And she goes, "The tea, men. Oh yes, the tea. Of course, please." And he he pours four cups of tea for you all and he like takes his and like Michelle goes down down and do whatever and he pulls out a flask it's about <laughs> like this this big it's it's a fairly large flask and he pours into the the teacup it looks like black liquid it's about uh, right <laughs> and he like he makes like an arcane gesture and then it's steaming hot Michelle told me I couldn't have coffee after tea time now so I have to make do with what I can <laughs> and he starts to sip it he... now on completely different subject you me who built you are you and he like walks up and he like just touches your like he like completely like he is on to this now and he just kind of like reaches out and like touches your face and like he like pulls down your mask and he like you cool with this he... <laughs> did you build him me well i assumed he's with you i did That's not build rude. This, He's this our friend. model. Thank this you. is this is our friend. Sorry, they're our friend. Although I am I... very familiar with the process. Very familiar might be a stretch. Yeah. Did my homework. That doesn't mean yeah, Al mm, Alphonse wouldn't have come across that many. <laughs> Make a deception check. It's not You're deception. Not your conjuration no, wizard. Alphonse doesn't like we've talked about this when no Noah said like Alphonse would know of them but not much about them. It's a 12. But he, he looks back at you like mm. uh I know of the process. That's not do a you? stretch. Yes. You Alphonse knows how warforged are made. Yes. Come on, Noah. That's that's. Maybe I don't. Know I don't know how to physically put one together. But he like, knows the theories. I know the it. theories, and I know the whys, and I know the why they're not made anymore. How to? This goes um, against what we've said before, but not up to me. Oh, just... that makes actually. <laughs> is that why <laughs> Kenneth is in your backstory? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that I have a Warforged factory and that I'm like an engineer or anything, but like, I understand the process. I imagine everyone in Eberron would, or in, in Corvair, would know what a Warforged they're is not and why. That con they would know what they are and that, like, yeah, they're magical constructs, but they wouldn't know that much about them. Like, they're not artificers and. Warforged aren't that common. Well, they were in, in standard Eberron. I thought they were heavily produced to end the war. They're in all of Eberron. There are ten thousand Warforged. Warforged are less than point one percent of the population. Seven in ten thousand people so all i'm trying to say is like i'm familiar with them like they're more common than the one that i've seen here yes they're more common in yes. my world you, and from yeah. what i communicated to noah because i identified pilot i feel like i should have an understanding of like what they are I Given agree my, with that. You, okay, no, no, I you, was really just—I was really just saying that your wording of "I am very familiar with the process" was like, "No, you're—you definitely yeah, the, don't the know how you, they're made." You said, "I'm very familiar with the process," implies like 
that I you could had make to a make warforged it. if oh, no. like that, that's not I had the I material. That's not what I mean. Yeah, no, you oh, just you know I mean. about warforged. Yeah. They're more common where you're from. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. if you if the intent is like, oh no, I'm I'm way more familiar with them than this is this is not the only warforged yeah, I've ever encountered in my entire meant. life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That is I'll I'll take that as what it is then. They're uncommon, but like they're they're part of your world's history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not um, trying to jump down your throat. We're just trying yeah. to make sure Alphonse isn't like all knowing. Yeah. And so he goes, I look at it at Pilot, he goes, I'm gonna come back to you. I you said you're not from here. Are you from the south? The southern continent or I'm not from this world. You can say he's out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't exactly know what means sent me to this one. But I don't belong here. Let's just say the, the, the thaumaturgical sphere of this world is very different from the one back at home. And when I made contact with when when I was sent here, there was some form some form of ripple, and I lost a fair bit of my power. Well, that's entirely theoretical, but it can be. But it has to be. But it's entirely. Hammond, <laughs> get out the astral map. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh I understand the hesitation. He gets kind of over your face and he kind of like like looks you over and he's like he's like giving you like a half a doctor's exam <laughs> and he goes They kind of mirror him. Sphere is different. Yeah, absolutely. Make a performance check. Uh, <laughs> that is a six. He like <laughs> Yeah, he, like, as you, so he's, like, looking at him, and, like, he's sort of mimicking him very poorly, I will add. Uh, he looks at you, and he goes, he gestures, and he goes, do stop. You feel a intense, like, all of you do feel, like, uh, for a second, like, all of the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Alphonse, especially you in this close of proximity, Pilot, I need to make a wisdom saving throw. is a 19. Cool. As he says, oh, do stop. The air around you quivers and uh, suddenly you are standing 90 feet across the uh, room on the other side of the laboratory. And he's and looking over Alphonse. He says, can you could you press the digitate something for me? Sure. Uh what what would you like to see and he 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 gestures and um a like an eight pointed spherical star appears in the palm of his hand it just looks like a like a metal like a a, a steel ball with like eight points coming out from it like like a like a d4 with four extra points he goes could you do this okay same thing interesting The way you, the way you call the power is different too. That makes sense, uh, given that your, if your Majesty was this. And as he's like muttering, Tamman goes, "Master, I've got the map." <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, on the center table, please. Vixel does like a sup nod to Tamman. <laughs> Go good. ahead. Good to see you again. He goes again. This is all purely theoretical. What you see is a is a big map. Essentially, it's kind of a map. It looks like, to some extent, a star chart, but there are big, huge circles in some places. And inside of each of those circles is a few more smaller semicircles. He says. Theoretically, our world exists within 
a bubble within the astral plane. We are here. Inside of our bubble is our plane, the plane of fire, the plane of water, the, the Feywild, the astral plane, the ethereal plane, the, well, the astral plane is everything, the ethereal plane, and all the other planes touching ours. Theoretically, should you travel far enough through the astral plane, which also touches all of these other planes, you could potentially come to another world with another ethereal plane touching it, with another Feywild touching it, with another group of planes touching. The distance across the astral plane is, is so incredibly immense that you would need you would need some sort of vessel to do it. Or imagine we were all on islands. You could potentially get on a boat and sail to another island. Or theoretically, if you had really good aim and a really strong catapult, you could just throw someone there. But the chance that you end up in the ocean is incredible. <laughs> you could just you wouldn't do that they they would they would get incredibly hurt in the process or just end up in the water <laughs> but you're here and i'm assuming you didn't come via boat <laughs> so that means you must have been catapulted oh this is fascinating now if we could build a boat and travel oh but that would be so amazing I'll have to go in the archives for that. Suffice to say, I have no idea how to get you home, which I assume <laughs> is something that you want to do, but... Even in my world, the looking at this, and uh, I did do a little bit of uh, study in the astral plane in my time uh, pouring over old tomes. Even Even the elemental airships that we have at home couldn't do this. Oh no no no! Because the, the airships are, are are specifically they're just meant to fly. Airship, wait. There it is. <laughs> Airship. <laughs> that is theoretically possible. We'll circle back around. But no, a, a boat is made simply to go across the ocean. A glider could could glide. An airship could just fly the the astral plane having been there <laughs> astral projection it's not made for travel across it's more like the central room in a house that you have to pass through to get to every other room if that room was the entire universe beyond would we know and see now all all i recall from this and no you can you can say this is not correct but all i recall is a large a very loud snap and i felt lifeless in space and time only to open my eyes in this new world so it wasn't and i i understand your theoretical catapult for, for that may the 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 theory behind that does make sense but is it possible to create a portal to do such magic now i i know i i had a very very powerful friend who i may have quarreled with so no, even okay. such magic well such magic exists that we can travel to other planes touching our own, and even some of the ones that don't touch directly, but they're still within our sphere. I can't imagine a, a tell... Could it be possible that you were... Many spells exist to incapacitate and to, to modify the memory of one. Per perhaps that could have occurred. But no, no magic that I know of could possibly get you here instantaneously. 
What are you suggesting by that? Teleportation spell. So as he has said, within our sphere, magic works a certain way, which would explain if you are, were capable of more in your world, should I go to another sphere through means of travel unknowingly without being able to adjust to that change? It would be like discovering magic new. Of course, magic is magic. I, I understand divine. I understand arcane. I understand those that bargain for those or those that are naturally gifted. Magic is magic is magic, but it's like the different types of rice. <laughs> rice is rice, but is it, is it whole grain or is it this? Or the different beans of coffee. And it's subtly different. And when you are working with immense power, subtleties matter. I'm, I'm asking more what you meant by the memory remark. Well, it, it's not incredibly hard to completely modify one's memory magically. But there usually are tells, right? When one's memory is modified. Is there not? We may know someone who has had their, their memory altered or partially erased through magical means or other. So through a magical means, you can affect someone's memory for 10 minutes or it, it would be with immense magic, maybe more. I, I personally could erase this entire conversation from your memory right now because it's happened so recently, but and many not arc wizards could do so but not for days or years or months I could also I personally could alter a memory of yours no more than 10 minutes up to a year ago hmm. at least so you may say you had bacon and eggs for breakfast, but I could make a porridge. Or the letter you read this morning, I assume, inviting you here for tea, could have invited you to the southern continent. I find it more likely, though, that perhaps you were incapacitated for a period of time. The travel here would have been incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> might I say but that's what I would expect and that would explain the suddenness of the arrival and the suddenness of understanding or misunderstanding of our magic here very interesting very troubling troubling indeed you have anything from home on your person Alphonse just this ring. But I don't believe it'll do much. I don't have anything else, right? My robes, my wand. Yeah. Yeah. This ring? This one. He takes it from you. He looks it over and he casts the guest identify on your ring. Oh dear. This ring is cursed. <laughs> Cursed. I've had this ring my whole or life. <laughs> was cursed. Place on this ring is a spell of imprisonment. It's not the way I would do it, but with an imprisonment spell, you can do everything such as shrink someone down to the size of a gemstone and they're locked inside. Uh, you can 
You could curse someone to fall asleep and they can never be awoken. You could put them in a tiny demiplane. You could bury them beneath the earth. You could have perhaps been imprisoned and then sent here inside of the prison of course and then released how did you come about this ring this is merely my signet ring it's the one that I've worn on my person since I came of age his whoever did this was very close to me did it leave your your person after that any instance you can remember not stop my voice not for any long period of time so perhaps when you were studying and you took it off or you went or to the shower or... <laughs> or sleeping someone cursed your ring or maybe it was cursed before you ever received it is that how that would work I don't think so Somebody would have had to like he, take it. No, he would have to have cursed it and like really played the long game. <laughs> you, yeah. Doable. You would think it would take effect. You would assume it would take effect fairly immediately. Mm -hmm. May I take this for a moment? I wish to dispel it. I can tell this matters to you. Of course. Um, Alphonse kind of sits back. Like I, we're not sitting, right? And I'm just. You're standing. You're all kind of around a table, a large table. I guess I, I lean on my staff a little bit, and I'm just kind of, I'm lost map. because... Map. <laughs> yeah, now I'm more worried about home <laughs> and why. Oh. Uh, Devin, I'm going to need some water after this. Please give me a shell. <laughs> and what you notice is that... Uh, he, he kind of gestures at the clock. goes, could you help me with this table? And... I just, I wish to, we just need to scoot it out of the way a little bit. And I pick it up and move it out of the way. <laughs> uh, as you move it out of the way, you notice embedded in the center of the tower, the the stairs are, are slightly offset in the center now that you, you like, have walked around a little bit. In the, like, dead center is a gold band about that thick, and it runs in a perfect circle right around the center of the tower. And in a moment, he pulls out a piece of what appears to be chalk out of his robes, and he starts making marks. And there are a few few points around the circle. It appears to be some sort of some sort of gram. Multiple points. A few other arcane symbols. And he puts your ring in the center. He gestures, and he says a few, quite a few, arcane words and a few arcane gestures and it feels like the entire room goes dim as he focuses in on the last one and he exhales and he reaches out towards the ring and you feel that like room going dim it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer closer and closer and closer to the ring and then it feels like the room is much too bright it's, it's like the reverse of there being an incredibly bright light right in the center of the room. It's the point where your ring is located is, is too dark and everything else around you is too bright. Mm. Like it's the it's the reverse of like putting your hand over the sun. It collapses in, it collapses in. And in like a wisp all of the darkness wisps away and the lighting of the room and the sunlight and everything appears to return to normal. And all of the chalk and markings inside the circle fade just completely as if someone had, had perfectly cleaned the area. Minolin sways on his feet just a little bit and he shakes his head and he reaches down and he picks up the ring and he offers it back to you and says it should be fine now Minolin, if I may ask oh, yes 
you did find out that the ring was cursed. Yes. Uh, perhaps do you know how strong the curse was? The curse and item add to that level would be the maximum power hmm. that I know how to measure by. So you're suggesting his imprisonment, whatever it was, from this curse acted as a vessel to travel here, but how was he how was he brought here? That I have no clue. If imprisoned and then transported it could have been done over without you knowing it could have been done over a long period of time it could have been years it could have been days um, it could have been months it could have, it could have been thousands of years but then how did alphonse's physical self not deteriorate some of these prisons can just hold you it's it's meant to be if you are conscious it's it can be a form of torture just to be in stasis and nothing or a form of sleep where you are cur you're just asleep and no no no, no no not aging not doing not nothing and emptiness uh, the forms of these prisons can take the forms of hedge mages, mazes, hedge mages, like my good friends, hedge mazes, where you just Beating can you never find an escape. Stupid hedge mages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes they're just a room where you can see out of and never interact. I know one form that binds you in chains forever, essentially. Or until the spell is released. So, what you're saying is, I'm very lucky to even land here at all. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I am. Uh, it is very easy to fire someone directly into the ocean, but to have the luck to land on an island. Of course, it could have. It could have just been you. Could be a, you. Could be the message in a bottle that floated to shore. I frost would never. Anyway. Ugh, that's a lot to dwell on. Maybe, maybe we can continue this conversation another time. Gladly. You have uh, access. I also... Here. And he, he pulls out a, a parchment and quill and ink, and you realize in that quill and ink... You sense the the enchanted essence that is the same that you use for your spell book. And he begins to scribble on the spell. It it's a there's a circle with uh specific markings in it. A few like all kinds of like arcane words of power and stuff, and he, he rolls it up and he says This should you be able to cast it one day. We'll take you right here from anywhere in this plane. Hmm. Uh you. it is a spell scroll of teleportation circle. And it is the coordinates to his teleportation circle, which you are currently standing on. So, in regards to our other conversation, it seems we have been we have been tasked by Mab to get to the bottom of this this problem. So perhaps if there is any way you could help us in locating this this gate, we can investigate and get back to you. And of course, to Mab. Over the past decades, two decades specifically, that I've been Arcanist, we've had a series of reports through certain portions of the Kingswood that are more Fey active than others. This would imply potentially the passageway or gate or doorway that you're looking for is in that area. My third apprentice Claire has the records of these I will send for her to deliver them to the laughing cat 
potentially with some sort of smaller map which can get you in the the area it's, it's the Kingswood is so active both mundanely and magically that it is nigh impossible to map constantly it is it is ever changing and is frankly the bane of my existence as arcanist <laughs> among everything else that al has me work on paths come and go and disappear and overgrow and ungrow and any attempt to cut back the wood results in overgrowth twice as much so i can perhaps get you i assume this doorway would be in the most chaotic portion of that where it is the worst and it's actually in terms of distance it's much closer to storm's fall than any other major city in the country in the realm but i the fair definitely not my specialty <laughs> I can't see how this will aid us in any way, but is this of any interest to the king? We did bring this information up to him before, but we really got nowhere with it. I imagine this is quite, quite the heavy topic and quite the, well, not easy to understand sort. Mm -hmm. This is technically my job, I guess. Al has been... Ever since Eliza's death, he's been... Terrible to get along with. And it's it's been worse in the past five years, ever since her painting was stolen. There, as an aside, there were only Ex two paintings of the Queen. Excuse and... me. He, as Zixel, pulls out the painting, unfurls it very carefully and rolls it out onto the ground. Yes, this painting was stolen. <laughs> Before you get any ideas, um, we found it when we were fighting the dragon. It was we in a not... dragon's hoard. I know what you're thinking. Various other trinkets. The dragon that we in were what... not yes. provided assistance for. In what in appeared to be a smuggler's have... cave. Yes. There were, in fact, what appeared to be several warriors within this cave. It's also this dragon seemed to be causing some of the issues with the lack of melt and runoff. That caused the economy to not be as fast as it was before, and we... Inadvertently helped solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That ill call. <laughs> this is a lot for done pack. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got Fey, we've got Outer Worlds, we've got mechanical beings, we've got, got dragons, this we've painting got paintings. of the dead queen, <laughs> dragons, In economy. The past half an hour, <laughs> you have done. Perhaps you could come for tea tomorrow, also, and we could <laughs> begin to unpack that. As we Absolutely. said, we are on a bit of a time crunch. Yes. As you know, a, a gesh with, with Queen uh, Mab herself. Yes, a no gesh, gesh with the Winter Queen herself. Yes, I have that stored away in my mind tower. <laughs> this is a tower. Good to know. Makes mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> Diamond? Yes, Arcanist. Could you send a fire message to Claire? Ask her to uh, bring the records on fair activity in the Kingswood. Near the Tree of Life. Of course. And as you watch, like Tamin is sitting, like he's, like he's, like he's, like yeah, this shit happens all the time. He's, like, he's, he's got one of your cups of tea <laughs> sitting on the table, and he he writes a message on a scroll, and he takes it, and he lights a candle on the desk beside him, and he like appears to like it looks like he sets the message like on fire on the edge, and then it just 
it like consumes the whole whole message and a few bits of ash fall and it's gone just a side note that your system of messaging mm -hmm. seems to damage some tables of recipients <laughs> you may be receiving a bill from the laughing cat <laughs> I'll cover it with my stipend. <laughs> just throw it on the pile. <laughs> All just absolute menaces. That, that oh. one's going to be at the bottom of the list. <laughs> Fire messages occasionally singe tables. Got it. I'll put it. I'll put it there. Uh, Zixel carefully rolls the painting back up again. That. Hold on. Are you the Goliath that yelled at El Al? <laughs> um, I may have had a heated discussion with him about the dragon and his lack of action. That perhaps. Yeah. Now this, that is the puzzle piece lacking in this entire picture. Of course, is the the one keystone. Of... I wouldn't say yelled. You wouldn't say yelled, <laughs> uh... but of course you wouldn't. <laughs> Illichal is very passionate about protecting his family. I don't think he can be blamed for that. I, I do not blame anyone for yelling. I yell all the time. It's an unfortunate <laughs> habit. Hey, King, you know that, that Goliath you've been having nightmares about? Yeah, he's got a painting <laughs> of your wife and... Uh... <laughs> of your dead fucking wife. <laughs> it wasn't the Goliath, it was the cat next mm -hmm. to the Goliath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this poor man. We've showed up with like a full house, you know, like a full Like house. a year's <laughs> worth of problems. Here's the, here's the scroll of things that we've got going on. <laughs> on the large scale. And the king help us. And he help you specifically. I do not think so. Can you be much more in his good graces after this event that I've heard of? Yes. <laughs> Six little gestures at the painting. Surely. Ex exactly. Can that happen today? No. Can it happen tomorrow? Yes, if you give me... <laughs> what an afternoon tea. <laughs> There's a lot of paperwork that I'm going to have to do. Can this occur tomorrow? What can can 24 hours? Perhaps the maps that I that Claire will bring can save you 48 on the road. And yes. maybe the 24, maybe by me 24. Yes, I think that that is fine. As long as Ronald you were okay with that. It will need to be okay. Would you happen to possess the ability to teleport us closer to the tree? Save us some distance. I've never been there, so not with any accuracy. I could attempt to, but you could end up in someone's hearth as well as <laughs> a multitude of other places just as easily. Did we inform him about pilot's mission? Yeah, we did that. We have to yeah. get there. Oh, yeah, oh, just, but not just about pilot's goal. The... Not why yeah. they're doing it. Yeah, but, sh but should we though? Yeah, because he was curious about pilot. That's something he didn't even get to. That's another yeah. thing. Yeah, that's another <laughs> on the agenda. <laughs> but the pilot, if if you wanted to bring it up or not. Yeah, it's up to you if you want to bring it up or not. Mm. This is your chance to bring it up or not. To bring up the my, what I need to know. Yeah. Or what I want you could to know. you could also yeah. mention the painting we don't that we don't know about if he knows anything about that. Oh, the painting you found. Yeah, oh, the yeah. question is, does he yeah. know about mm -hmm. it? Yeah, does he know that's... about it? Yeah, fair. I, uh, yeah, I look at him and I, I think I've met Queen Mab before this instance. but I don't remember, and I've made. I might have made some deal with her. The problem is I don't remember too much 
about myself. I don't even know how old I am. That's a lot, also. <laughs> I can I bet. Or middle age. See if you do not if you have any other if you have spells cast upon you. Would do you People like that? Think I'm usually a pretty regular person. Interesting. May I cast a spell on you? I promise it won't hurt. Or I I can't actually promise that it won't hurt. It, <laughs> I've never had it hurt a human. <laughs> Is that be my guest? And he says a few magical words. Uh, he reaches out, he touches. He actually quickly he pulls from his his pocket the really fancy looking pearl, uh, and an owl feather it appears like out of a out of a component pouch. And he like touches like your shoulder, and you see the same kind of arcane flash that occurred when he identified when he checked the ring. I see the gesh. And he looks down at your wrist. He goes, I can see the Gesh. And I can see this haze around you. But you wear it more like a cloak than something that's been cast upon you. I feel as if you could control it if you wanted. If I wanted? Yes. Like taking off a mask. You could stop wearing the cloak. Like an on and off switch, if you will? Sure. Physical cloak itself? No. The cloak like, of magic. Okay. If yeah. you will. Not like a magic cloak. <laughs> yeah. A cloak of magic. The yeah. Okay. In fact, I can see. You are entirely different from anything I've ever met. I can see all of the magic within you, but it's more like a life force than just simple arcane power. You are very interesting. And these others have vouched to you as a friend, so I will assume you are a friend. I don't ever mean any harm, of course. I barely know who I am sometimes. They are one of the kindest, if not strangest, people I have met in a long time. Other than that, I do not see any other magic cast upon you, though. No one is preventing these memories. Not in a cursed way, at least. If these memories are lost to you, it is more biological. I see. That brings some relief that I am... I lost these memories not by harm to me, I suppose. Or that I know of. Not of the magical kind, at least. Yeah, no one, based on what he can tell, nobody has modified your memory. Mm -hmm. So all of the memories that you experience are, are real based on that, then. Mm -hmm. And... No one's made you forget that. Mm -hmm. It's like not through casting a spell. Somebody could hit you over the head pretty hard. Cool. That that <laughs> yeah. would give you amnesia. Would... Yeah. <laughs> I think Sixel wants to say. Uh, Are there any dents it's... in my head? <laughs> <laughs> Never anyone look. Okay. Uh, Zixel Are says, you the Iron Giant? <laughs> uh, the second son has shown some interest in this one. He looks at you like... <laughs> like I look at Sixel like... <laughs> Interesting in and of itself. Now I have a lot of work to do. Uh, do come back for brunch tomorrow morning. <laughs> Zixel We're having Sira Day and about... Toast. Zixel hasn't told us about Corin, right? Yeah. No. 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 Just making sure. We'll be here. 
So to get some rest, you all seem to need it terribly. You have a great day. <laughs> well, bye now. Well, bye. <laughs> and we all jazz hands out. <laughs>